Stratasiji, welcome back to Russian Three Poems and Paintings. Uh, today's day 126, and uh, we're continuing today with what we're calling PPPs for short, right? Past passive participles, uh, or as we'd say in the book, past passive uh, verbal adjectives, right? Uh, we saw those ending in anli and t on day 125. Today we're taking the third possible ending, yonli which can also show up as yenli, depending on where the stress falls. And so we're going to look at this today. Now, these are uh, the more complicated ones. And uh, because um, verbs, e-verbs and ye-verbs form their participles with this third ending, uh, they're extremely common. And so this is a really important topic. These these PPPs come up all the time, and uh, they can be a little bit tricky because of the stress and also mutations, right? So let's quickly review... Uh, First, actually, let's start with a little painting, a rather uh, creepy one, right? Pobizhdyonnaya panichida. A panichida is a requiem service, you know, service for the dead. Um, and uh, here we see an Orthodox priest with this field of dead bodies. And um, at one point I thought this is some kind of a, some kind of dark fantasy, but this is apparently based on, a you know, the aftermath of an actual battle. Um, anyway, so it's an interesting pa- painting. And this uh, painter, Virishagin, uh, has a number of canvases that are basically anti-war, right? They try to depict the, the uh, you know, the senseless violence of war or whatever. Okay, so anyway, после битвы, after the battle, на поле покрытым телами погибших солдат до самого горизонта мы видим оставшегося в живых командира и рядом с ним священника, служащего панихиду. Okay, so again, pr- fairly typical of uh, formal prose, right? Lots of uh, de-verbals. On a field, pakritam telami, on a field covered by the bodies, or with the bodies, instrumental, pagibshikh soldat, of uh, perished soldiers, of de- or soldiers who have fallen in battle, who have perished, uh, past active from pagibnut, uh, to perish. The sum of a horizonte, right, all the way to the horizon, as far as the eye can see. Мы видим оставшегося в живых командира и рядом с ним священника служащего панихиду. Right, we see a um, a commander, an officer who has remained in the living, meaning he survived the battle, and alongside him a priest who is serving this panichida, this requiem service, right, служащий. Uh, present active uh, verbal adjective. At the time of Ziata Israelne Jizni, this is a topic, a theme, or whatever taken from real life. Ziataya, PPP. Vamnogich is Vaich Kartin, Chodojnich Vrishagin is a Brajait Ujasi Bismislanist Vainli. Right, in many of his paintings, the artist Vrishagin depicts the, the terror, the horror, and the senselessness of war. Okay, so we, again, several examples there in that um, uh, little caption there. Okay, so before we get to today's topic, let's do a little bit of review, right? Some stuff that should be very familiar by now. First off, uh, stress patterns and e-verbs and ye-verbs. Now remember that for all regular verbs in Russian, there are only three possible stress patterns. Stem stress, in stress, shifting stress. A couple things. If it's, if Look at the first infinitive there, advietit. Right, if the stress is on the stem in the infinitive, right, not on that final syllable, but back on the stem, like advietit, that's the good, the best case scenario because we know it's going to be stem stressed everywhere in all the conjugated forms, right? Okay, but look at the second two, govarit, paluchit, right, with the stress on that final syllable, we don't know what pattern, where right? we can't tell the pattern by looking just at the infinitive. Now note that we do know that the ya form is going to be in stress, right? That we know for certain. The question is, so gavaru paluchu. The question then is, will the stress jump back onto the stem in the remaining forms? For gavarit, it doesn't, right? Gavaru, gavarish, gavarit. So we say that's in stress. But for paluchit, it does. We get paluchu, paluchish, paluchit, etc. That's our shifting stress pattern. Remember that when we say shifting stress for any regular verb, this is the pattern we mean, right? In stressed on the ya form, jumping back to the stem everywhere else, right? There's only one shifting stress pattern. It's not shifting around randomly for every every verb that has shifting stress. Okay, so um, again, let's kind of summarize this quickly, right? The three kind of possibilities. Advietic, 
that's clearly stem stressed and it's obvious just looking from the infinitive. If we have the infinitive within stress, though, we've got to do some thinking, right? Hopefully we know the forms. If we know the ya and the ti, then that's enough to establish the pattern, right? Okay, that ti form makes clear that the stress is staying on the ending, and so we'd say is indeed an in-stressed uh, verb. Paluchit, though, we get paluchu, paluchish. Again, that's enough to show that it's shifting back. So we, we can establish now that Poluchit has shifting stress. Okay, so let's look at some infinitives here. And this is a very simple task, but it's so useful, right? Can we know the stress pattern just by looking at the infinitive? Rishit, no, right? Because it's on the final syllable. Could be shifting, could be end. Sprasit, no. Darit, no. Pomnit, yes, right? So that's the that's the easy one, Pomnit. That's going to be stem stress for sure. Nienavidit, yes, right? Nienavidit, nienavidit. Sidiet, no. Gatovit, yes. Lubit, no. Prasit, no. Platit, no. Vidit, yes. Vierit, yes. Okay, so I went through that quickly, but again, it's kind of elementary, right? But again, it's very, very important to p- pick up on that, that issue. Right now, again, what about the ones here that are whose infinitive is in stress? Well, there again, to to know the pattern, we'd have to look it up in a dictionary. We'd have to maybe, hopefully, the dictionary may give us the first two forms, or you know, enough to establish the pattern. Most good dictionaries would do that, by the way. Or maybe we happen to remember the form, the first two forms, right? So either way, let's give the forms and tell you know, knowing the forms, what is the stress pattern? Rishit, we would get rishu, rishish, in stress, right? Sprasit, sprashu, sprosish, shifting stress, right? Darit, daru, darish, darish, shifting stress. Sidiet, siju, sidish, in stress. Platit, plachu, platish, right? Shifting stress. Six, lubit, lubish. Shifting, sorry, lubit, lublu, lubish, right? Uh, shifting stress again, right? So uh, that's how you would determine that. Again, if you didn't know anything about the verb, you'd have to look it up in a good dictionary that gives you at least the first two conjugated forms, and that will allow you to establish the stress pattern, right, with, uh, with confidence. Okay, so that, that does it for stress. Now, the other issue we're going to face in making these PPPs in Yonli is mutation, right? They're going to show the mutation that we would see in the ya form of the conjugated verb. Now, we're quite familiar with this at this point, right? Here are some, here's a quick rundown of the mutations we've seen, including all the labials, right, that add that soft L. Um, so just a quick review, right? Advietis, right, the, we get mutations in the ya forms, of e and ye yeah verbs if a mutation is possible, right? So for example, advietit, we get advietu, advietish, advietit, right? But gvarit, that final er can't er can't mutate, right? So no mutation. Gvaril, gvarish, gvariat. Right? So hopefully that's very familiar by now. Okay, so let's let's review this by <clears throat> giving the first two forms of these verbs, watching for mutations. This is a very good review. Uh, I've given you the stress pattern if if it's not visible from the infinitive. Sidiet. Siju sidish. Right again, note the end stress. Lubit. Lublu lubish. Vierit. Vieru vierish. Right? That's stem stress, obviously. Platit. Plachu platish. Sprasit. Sprashu, sprosish. Darit, shifting. Daru, darish. Abisnit, in stress. Abisnu, abisnish. Uchitsa, shifting. Uchus, uchishsa. Nravitsa, that's going to be stem stress, obviously. Nravlus, nravishsa. Ten, pomnit, also stem stress. Pomnu, Pomnish, 11, Gatovit, stem stress, Gatovlu, Gatovish, 12, Vidit, stem stress, Viju, Vidish, 
Okay, so quite a bit of review there, right? It took us a long time, hopefully, well, not hopefully, but it, it did probably take us a long time to get the hang of all that back in the day. At this point, we have to hope that it's reasonably familiar, right? Okay, so all of, all of that, right, the, the stress issues and the, mut the issue of mutation are also going to figure into verbal adjectives made with yuanli or yenli. Okay, so what verb types take these uh, form PPPs like in this way, right? Well, e verbs and ye verbs, as we've mentioned, and also obstruents, right? Those types at the very bottom of the verb table, like prinisti, privisti, right? That we're marking with a, a consonant like s, the, ka, ge, whatever. Okay, so uh, two things to think about here. First, is there a mutation in the ya form? If there is, we're going to include that in the PPP, right? So we're getting our mutation, or lack thereof, from the ya form, and we're getting the stress from the thi form. Okay, so again, the, both the mutation and the stress pattern is coming into play here. So for example, from Prigatovitz, Prigatov Liu, okay, there's our mutation. We're going to keep that Vlya, right? Stress on the T form is Prigatovish, right? Not in stress, that is. Our PPP is Prigatovlinli. Again, we've kept the mutation from the Ya form and the stress from the T form. Now, of course, since the stress falls where it does here, not on the ending, but on the O, then we can't possibly have Yonli, right? We can't have Yo in an unstressed position. So, uh, you see how this hangs together. Kupit, uh, shifting, kuplu. Okay, there's our mutation. T is kupish, kuplinli, kuplinli. Rishit, okay, that's an in stress. So we get rishu, no mutation here. Rishish, rishonli. Okay, and there's an example of yonli uh, following the T stress on the ending. Rishish, rishish, rishonli. Okay, some examples with obstruents, right? Again, we're, uh, oh, well, let's take these one by one. Prinisu, prinisios, prinisionli. Okay, no mutation there. Stress follows what we'd expect. Prinisios, prinisionli. Pirividu, pirividionli. Okay, ispiku, ispichos. Okay, these follow a somewhat peculiar um mutation pattern where the inner forms uh, mutate, right? If you don't remember what that means, look in the back of the verb table, right? It means basically is piku, is pichosh, and then the third plural would be back to is pikut, right? So you get the ka, you stick with the ka on the outer forms, the first singular and third plural, but everywhere else you get a cha. And these PPPs, again, for these verbs of which there aren't very many, they take their their um, mutation from the T form, right, from the inner forms. Okay, so those are a little bit weird, but um, again, there aren't a whole lot of them. So, for example, is pichonli, pastrigenli. Now, the pastrigenli also doesn't quite follow the normal stress pattern. Okay, so again, those those verbs are kind of unusual. And uh, um, anyway, uh, you know, you... As with, with all these forms, as we've said, there are always going to be some weird exceptions, and we just kind of have to watch out for them. And, you know, don't let your whole world fall apart when you see one of them, right? It doesn't mean that everything else we've said is wrong or uh, just constantly unreliable, right? We just have to keep our eye out for a few kind of weird verb types or a few forms that are just irregular, right? They just don't follow the rules, right? But again, there, we shouldn't think that this happens constantly. Okay, um... Anyway, uh, let's do a few of these. Pastroits. Okay, that's the easy case, right? The stress is already on the stem. So it'd be pastroio, pastroish, if we were going through and making all the forms. Uh, now, a lot of times, hopefully, you won't ha need to do that, really. You can just kind of jump straight to the PPP, which would be pastroianly, right? Built. Rastroits, another easy one to upset. We would get rastroianly. Okay, so again, if the stem is on the, if the stress is on the infinitive, uh, if the stress is on the stem in the infinitive, that's especially easy, right? Um, okay, now uh, another a more difficult one, ujivit to surprise. Okay, that's in stress. The ya form would be ujivlu. Okay, there's our mutation ujivl, right? Tu ujivish, in stress. We put those two things together. We get ujivlyonli, ujivlyonli which would mean surprised. 
uh, Dabavitz. Okay, we're gonna get a, get a mutation. Dabavlu, but stress is on the stem. Dabavish, that gives us Dabavlinli added. Dabavlinli. Number five, Puchinit. Okay, shifting stress. Puchinu. Okay, so we're getting a soft end, but there's no real mutation, right? Puchinu, Pachinish, Pachinini, Pachinini, fixed, repaired. Number six, Abidit. Okay, get a mutation. Abiju, Abidish, stress back on the stem. The PPP is Abijinli, Abijinli, offended. Number seven, shifting stress, Paluchis, Paluchu, Paluchish, no mutation, right? The ch remains Paluchinli, Paluchinli, received. Eight, Pachistits. Okay, watch for the cluster mutation, right? Uh, the S -th is going to mutate as a cluster to sh, right? And we get the stress, obviously, is back on the stem. That gives the PPP Pachishinli, Pachishinli. Okay, now let's do a few obstruents. Now remember, these are a little bit kind of funny. They're rather difficult verb types. Again, you might want to review them quickly at the bottom of the table in the back of the book. Uh, we don't really need the ya form here. Um, so let's just take the T form. Unisyosh, that gives the PPP unisyonli, carried away, right? Number two, razvidyosh would be the T form. Razvidyonli, meaning divorced, separated, led apart. Number three, pirivisti. Okay, so transported, shipped from one place to another. Pirivisyosh, pirivisyonli. And padmisti, to sweep up. I'm not sure we've ever seen that verb. Anyway, the T would be padmityosh, padmityonli would be the PPP. Okay, one quick topic today that we're going to kind of keep an eye out for. We're not necessarily going to learn this actively. I mean, uh, it would be nice to do that, but let's look at a quick painting here. Asujjonli. That means that's from the, the PPP from the verb asujit, which means to condemn, right? Meaning someone's been convicted, they've been condemned in court. Um, and you see this guy coming out and seeing his mother who's praying or entreating or lamenting or whatever, the uh, arrest of her son, right? So we could call him asujjonli. Okay, if the infinitive is asujit, then why did we end up with asujjonli, right? Not, why not asujjonli or asujjonli or something like that with the de to je? Because this verb shows a church Slavonic mutation. Okay, so th these mutations that we see in Russian, they occur uh, in one way or another in all Slavic languages, but, um, you know, each, each Slavic language is a little bit different phonetically, so um, the actual mutations we, we end up with are often a little bit different, right? Close, but, but different, right? Okay, so uh, Church Slavonic, remember, is a, is a South Slavic language that was, you know, eventually brought to Russia and kind of uh, lived alongside spoken Russian as a literary language. Um, now, uh, you know, in time... Uh, the, the literary language of Church Slavonic was sort of fused with Russian to make a, an actual written literary form of the Russian language, right? Uh, and for that reason, a lot of um, Church Slavonic forms, including these mutations, uh, managed to stick around, and nowadays they're basically part of Russian, right? So, of course, we'd say all these words are Russian words, but in terms of their form or, or certain forms, including mutations, they're reaching back to what is what is was originally a Church Slavonic word, right? With Church Slavonic mutations. Okay, so there are only two of uh, these in Russian, right? A T, which would normally mutate to Ch in Russian, as we know, in a Church Slavonic word, it, muta it mutates to Sh. Right, same thing with da. Normally, we'd expect that to mutate to a j, but if in a church Slavonic word it, it mutates to j da, right, j -da, basically, j and soft d. Okay, so basically, this is just kind of a matter of accident, I suppose, right? Certain, um, you basically have to know this as knowing part of the verb, right? That certain verbs, right, they they reach back to church Slavonic. They they began life as church Slavonic forms, and they still retain church Slavonic mutations, right? You just have to know that on a verb by verb basis. Now, thankfully, there aren't a whole lot of these, right? And it's the kind of thing you just you get used to as you you know as you learn Russian. Uh, but you know the main thing for now, I guess, is to know that this can happen, to keep an eye out for it, and so 
you know, again, when you look up a verb in a dictionary and you see these forms, you can spot, okay, okay, this verb is following the church Slavonic patterns, not the Russian ones that we learned back on day, whatever, 13 or whatever, back at the beginning of this uh, long travail, right? Okay, so here are just a few examples. Um, now, here's something that's really useful on a practical level. If you see the pair, uh, remember we've talked about derived imperfectives and how they, they you know, they go from an E verb, they derive an imperfective that's an I verb, as always, and that also shows mutations. Okay, so if a, church, if a, if a given verb takes church Slavonic mutations, that's going to be obvious just from looking at the pair. Right, so look at this. It's not abrachat, right? It's abrachat, abratit, right? That's enough to show us that we do have a, church, a verb that takes church Slavonic mutations. That would mean that the um, conjugated form of abratit would be abrashu, right? There's that church Slavonic mutation. Not abrachu, but abrashu. And that in turn would imply a PPP, abrashonli, uh, uh, abrashonli, right? Uh, any other verb that takes this vratit, right? By the way, vratit, that v is, has dropped out of the form abratit, but it was there originally. Vratit means to turn. Uh, prevratit, again, prevrashat, prevratit, we see from the pair that we're getting a church Slavonic mutation. Prevrashu, prevrashonli. Okay, so. Um, Let's take at least one more example. Pobijdat, pobidit. Okay, look at that. Pobijdat. It's not pobijat. It's pobijdat. That shows us we're dealing with church Slavonic mutations with this verb. The PPP would be pobijdjonli. Okay, so um, that's enough said there on the PPPs, right? Everyone sees what's going on here. Uh, one thing to note is that a lot of good dictionaries will say that the ya form doesn't exist, right? Then they may even go that far as to say they don't exist. Um, I think sometimes that may be going a little too far because you will hear Russians using these perfective verbs in their ya form, right? I mean, why not after all, right? But um, other Russians may uh, kind of um, hesitate when they go to conjugate, use this conjugated form. And the reason is that this this kind of ambiguity, right? How do I, how do I conjugate pobidit? Uh, would it be pobizdu or something, right? Because after all, it is a church Slavonic form. Do I treat it as a... Um, by the way, that form pobizdu, that basically is never, ever seen, right? I've never seen it personally. Uh, and I think it's pretty safe to say it just simply doesn't exist in Russian. But at the same time, if you treated this as a Russian verb, pobizdu, it sounds a little bit weird, right? It, I mean, or at least it could it strike certain speakers as a little bit off, Right. Okay. So again, but I have heard Russians in speech say "pobizhu." Uh, I don't think there's anything really wrong with it. But again, you see how, from the point of view of literary Russian, and certainly from the point of view of Church Slavonic, it's a li- it's a slightly weird form. Okay. So I'm not I'm not here to adjudicate that issue. Right. Um, you know, I'll let native speakers worry about this. But for learners, um, it's maybe something to be aware of. Um. Okay, so uh, that's enough on that, right? Just we kind of closed out there with a kind of troubling uh, exception to watch out for, but um, there you go. Okay, so we've now covered all three uh, PPPs, right? V- PPPs in anli, in ti, and today in yonli or yenli, right? We're going to spend one more day on PPPs uh, because one thing about PPPs is, of course, the forms we've seen so far have been long adjectives, right? They've all had the long adjectival endings, We're going to see tomorrow that uh, these forms are, they can all be used in their short form, right? So we're going to discuss, again, what is a short form adjective and what do the short forms of these PPPs look like. That's also going to be a very useful lesson because these short forms of the PPPs are extremely common, even in speech, right? Extremely common. In in much the same way that ED participles are very common in English, both in writing and in speech, right? They're very common. And so it's maybe not surprising that these PPPs are also going to be very common. Okay, so until then, uh, desvidanya.